Hey, my name is Colby. Welcome to Starlink Hardware. Starlink has issued another ultimatum for mobile regional users using Starlink services in unsupported countries. So you may remember a few months ago, back in April, I made a video about Starlink's warning to Rome users in Africa, where Starlink basically targeted these mobile regional users who were getting service in unsupported countries through the mobile plan. As you know, the mobile regional plan allows you to travel within your home continent, getting service just about anywhere. And through that loophole, people were able to get service in countries that are not yet Starlink approved, where people can't technically purchase Starlink kits or services. Well, now Starlink has a fresh ultimatum for users in those unapproved countries. Starlink is telling mobile regional customers that they either have to return their kits back to the home country where they originally signed up for service or change the country on their account. Now, obviously, if you're one of those mobile regional people that are using Starlink in an unsupported country, the latter option of changing your home country is not available because you can't change your country to a place that is not officially available according to Starlink. So that means that if you are on mobile regional and you're in a place where it's not supported, you might get disconnected. Starlink gives the date of the 21st of August as the deadline to do one of those two options. So that means if you can't change your home country or go back to your home country and then return to reset that two month clock, you're gonna lose internet access according to Starlink's most recent ultimatum through an email they sent out to customers last night. So it looks like this all stems from that two month rule that I just mentioned. Well, what is that? According to the Starlink terms of service, all of their plans are subject to this two month restriction. That means if you travel outside of your home country into a new place and stay there for more than two months, technically that's against the terms of service. You shouldn't be able to do that. Previously, Starlink has not enforced this at all. So Starlink has been around for years now. People have been traveling with it, even in unsupported countries. And this two month rule has existed the whole time, but Starlink has not enforced it up until now. Every single person that I've talked to that got this email was in the same situation. They were a mobile regional subscriber and they were in a, a location in a country that is unsupported and they'd been there for more than two months. So it looks like finally Starlink is going to start enforcing this two month rule. And if you're in a place longer than two months, you risk having your service cut off or disconnected unless you either move or upgrade your service plan, which we'll talk about later in the video. Now, what's interesting to me is that this two month restriction applies to all of their service plans, but only mobile regional people are getting this email. The mobile global people don't appear to be affected. They're not targeted by Starlink in this most recent round of warnings. So it's still unclear at this point if mobile global users are gonna be affected at all. And also what effect this has on mobile priority users, because according to that plan, as long as you have mobile priority data left in your allotment, you still have, mo you still have global access. This is going to affect a lot of people. Thousands, potentially tens of thousands of people are using mobile regional in unsupported countries, places in Africa, for example, that have been targeted previously with Sterling's warnings, there are thousands and thousands of people in a situation where they could lose their internet access after the 21st of August. Now, what's super confusing to me is in their ultimatum email, Starlink says that one option is to change your home country. But according to Starlink's own FAQ on their website, that isn't even a supported option. You cannot change the country on your account. Now they might be referring to kind of a manual change that you can do by reaching out to customer support, but there's no way for you as a user to go into your account and change your either your shipping address or your service address outside of your current country where you ordered Starlink. The other option that they gave mobile regional users in this situation is to travel back to their home country where they ordered their kit, that resets that two month clock. However, that's not really gonna be an option, a realistic option for most people, because most people in that situation are not really traveling with their unit. They're just regular people that are using it as residential service in unsupported countries where they can't order the regular kit. So the ability to travel hundreds of miles, maybe thousands of miles to the, to the home country of your kit is not really a practical option to reset that clock. In a lot of these unsupported countries, there's sort of a Starlink black market where third-party companies are importing all these kits 
and then selling them to people because they can't order it from Starlink directly. And of course, there's a high demand for Starlink services in a lot of these unsupported areas because internet infrastructure is either unavailable or unaffordable. So I can't really blame people for trying to use the mobile services in an unsupported country because at the end of the day, their priority is just getting online, getting internet access. And if they see a workaround, then might as well take advantage of it. In my video back in April, one of the workarounds, one of the solutions that I had mentioned in the video at the time was to change your account type to mobile priority as an alternative to mobile regional if you got shut off. And I, I mentioned that at the time because on the website, Starlink says that mobile priority has global internet access, global access, even after your quota of mobile priority data runs out. They have since revised the website and I think they have changed that plan. Now mobile priority just has mobile regional access, unlimited mobile data after your mobile priority allotment. So I don't think that's gonna be a workaround anymore. That's not gonna be a viable solution to change from mobile regional to mobile priority. And the reason that I suggested going to mobile priority versus mobile global is that mobile global, the price was doubled basically overnight. And that was another kind of method that Starlink was using to discourage people from using that global service in unsupported countries. It's my understanding that mobile global will still continue to have global access even in unsupported countries. There have been no, none of these email warning going out to mobile global subscribers, even if they've been in a location for that longer than two month, you know, restriction. So I think that is really the only realistic option here. If you're affected by this change, you can either travel back to your home country to reset the clock, or you can upgrade to mobile global, but that is prohibitively expensive for most people in that situation. One of the other things that you might be able to do to buy yourself a little bit more time is to cancel and create a new Starlink account. So if you cancel your service, transfer your kit out, and then create a new account, even in the same country that you were before, that should reset that two month clock. Again, I'm not 100% certain on that. I have no way of testing it myself to confirm, but if you're looking for options, if you get disconnected, that may, might be one of the things you can try. I've also heard that opting into mobile priority data, there's a little toggle on your account dashboard if you have the mobile regional plan. If you toggle that option on, you know, wait 15 minutes or an hour or so, and then toggle it back off, I've heard people report that that will also reset that two month clock. So if you wake up on August 21st or 22nd and you no longer have internet access through your mobile regional plan, try one of those things and see if that works. Otherwise, it looks like you're gonna have to upgrade to the mobile global plan or just not have Starlink internet at all. So why is Starlink doing this? And it really comes down to trying to get government approvals. Starlink has to reach out to these local governments and negotiate in good faith to get their services approved for that country so they can officially sell products and services to the citizens. However, when the country that they're trying to negotiate with sees people using Starlink services that is technically unauthorized, you know, that doesn't look good for Starlink. And Starlink can't really negotiate in good faith when they have people already using their services and products in a country and they're not authorized to do so. So I think this is kind of like the previous warning back in April. This is Starlink's attempt to show these governments that, hey, they're trying to take action. They're, they're not endorsing or condoning these activities that people are doing with the mobile regional plan. It just happens to be one of those features with the travel plan that you can actually get global you know, coverage because of the, the 6,000 plus satellites that Starlink has in orbit. So it's definitely this balancing act. On the one hand, Starlink's mission is to provide high speed, low latency internet to people in underserved areas that don't have any other options. And that includes those unsupported countries. But on the other hand, the best way to increase access to those people is to get the service officially approved in those countries. And they can't do that unless they're sitting down at the table and negotiating in good faith, trying to follow the rules, trying to prevent unauthorized access. With all that said, there's still a really good chance that this is just another bluff by Starlink. Back in April with that warning, they threatened to shut off customers in the same way, but they never did. They never disconnected a massive amount of people even though they said they were going to in that email. I got several follow-up comments and I am still getting them to this day from all of you guys 
my audience that's telling me, hey, I still have access on the mobile regional plan, even in an unsupported country. So this could be just another one of those situations where Starlink has to send out the warning, send out the email to show that they're at least trying, but maybe they don't actually disconnect, you know, thousands and thousands of customers. Time will tell. We'll just have to wait until the 21st of August to figure out how far Starlink is willing to go to prevent unauthorized access. If you got one of these emails, I'd love to hear from you in the comments below. If you have any other information or reports to share with us or the community, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to chat with you about it. As always, I appreciate you watching and I'll see you in the next video.